Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you're joining across the globe. I welcome you to this first in a series of editions I'm going to be having with entrepreneurs that are thinking global. So you have a business, you are thinking to expand the business across the shores of where you currently are. This platform is for you. We are going to be talking global. And just in case you are already operating on that level, that is, you are doing transborder business where you are targeting clients from other countries across the globe, welcome to the show. This session is for you. So I greet you, I greet you, I greet you. And today we are starting with a conversation, something around what you need to prepare for. If you are seeking to expand into Europe, you know, of course, Europe is very broad, it's large. It's, it's not a country. You are seeking to expand to countries that are members of Europe. Uh, we, of course, call them the EU, the European Union. So there are so many laws. There are so many policies, so many regulations you need to understand. And that's why we are having this conversation. So you're there. You are already doing business where you are targeting clients within Europe or you are seeking to expand your business to that part of the continent, this conversation would definitely help you. So what's my topic today? I want to share with you five essential tips if you are seeking to do business, uh, maybe make, sell a product, sell services to customers, clients in Europe. This conversation is for you and i'm going to be doing a lot of background so that we can have a context proper context of why this conversation is essential let me start with a fact from history i think that was uh, may 23rd around may 2023 did you know that facebook or better still let's say meta was lashed was fined a sum of 1.3 billion, not Nera, 1.3 billion pounds, I mean, sorry, dollars as a fine for moving data unlawfully from Europe to the United States, transmitting data from Europe to United States. And that signals something. It just simply means that it's a the game has changed it means that there is something you need to do about your business if you are going to be targeting people to patronize you within europe and patronizing in this context you need to have an understanding because i i've i've, I've listened to many people reach out to me and say well i'm running a charitable organization and my intention is to uh, get sponsors from europe blah 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 and because i am not selling products i'm not collecting money from them i do not have any reason to be listening to this program my brother my sister you are wrong and i will soon get to that if you allow me to have uh, that conversation with you doing targeting somebody in europe doing business selling product or service does not necessarily mean that you are collecting money from the people in europe yours can be a it doesn't have to be a business where you are collecting money it, it can be a not-for-profit in as much as you are targeting people within europe and people within europe don't also mistake it as oh uh, if, I'm, if an African within Europe uh, decides to do something with me, is an African after all, blah, blah, blah. Don't mistake it for that. So maybe what I'll just do is, I mean, this is just a random conversation. Let me get you into uh, the essence of this conversation and then I get you into the meat of the conversation. And by the way, just in case you are lost and you are wondering, what are we really talking about? We've had conversations around data. And you need to just check the archive, uh, subscribe to this platform, and then check 
the archive of conversations we've had, myself, my colleague at Data Mola, we've had a series of conversations where we talk about data and all of that. But why today's conversation is essential is this. So just in case, imagine yourself. Now, my prayer for you is you go global. And just in case you're on that level, you move the higher level. Now, imagine yourself being in Africa and then you are targeting to uh, sell a product or sell a service and you're pushing your adverts to any part in Europe. Not to forget, I haven't mentioned a particular country. I said any part in Europe or better still, any part of Europe that is a member of the European Union. So do your check. Now, if you are in this kind of situation and then you decide to push your adverts to that place, if you decide to sell product or service to any part of Europe or maybe just is, let's say you're an e-commerce company and you decide that you are trying to uh, monitor the behavior, uh, understand the trends and then come up with some business analysis, come up with some products. These things I am discussing, they are very vital to what you are doing. And I think I'm still going to have a session where I'll be holding e-commerce companies by the hands, entrepreneurs within the e-commerce space, so that I can guide them on how this whole thing works. Because you don't just jump on the train and then you think there is no law that might catch up with you. My brother, my sister, that could be a wrong one. So you should not fall victim of that. Don't be a Facebook, don't be a meta. Uh, don't be caught off guard before you have this kind of uh, exposure that would help you to build your business properly. So if you're going to be doing anything, uh, whether it's online, even if it's manual, in as much as what you are doing manually, right? In as much as you, you have a form of uh, process, like a filing system, a process of getting information in this context, getting data from people that you are seeking to do business with then you have to be cautious you need to listen to me you need to listen to these things i'm saying and then let me just also mention this in person so just in case yours is well you are doing a b2b let's say that you are monitoring businesses within europe you are not monitoring the natural persons human beings within europe you're monitoring businesses and um, you are understanding trends blah 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 well, congrats to you. You really may not need what I am talking about, but it's important that you still listen to me because you'll find it very handy for the business you are building. So what have I said now? If you are a B2B where you're targeting a business or monitoring the trend within businesses and you are not directly or indirectly targeting the people, let's say for instance that you're targeting trends and then you got into conversation around oh the lifestyle of the CEO of blah 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 company which is in Europe. Now you've taken it off a company, you have added a person to it, and so it's a dicey conversation you have to be prepared for. Which is why I said you need a thorough understanding of this conversation that we are having today. So it's really really important that you listen to me. So you want to do business. Uh, in Europe, yes, first thing I'll tell you is you need to have a robust privacy statement, which many people refer to as privacy policy. Well, statement, policy, whatever is the case, what it uh, has to do is that it talks about you uh, understanding, right? It's more like you have an understanding of your responsibilities when you are collecting data from people when you're getting information from people and then you also demonstrate that look you understand what the law is saying so you need a privacy policy that is robust in the context of europe and why did i say in the context of europe so there are so many data privacy laws so many policies around the use of data and there are differences across territories. Even within EU, there are still differences. For instance, don't be shocked that the age of a child in United Kingdom may be different from the age of a child in Germany. Because the GDPR, which is the law 
that is principal in this conversation allows for these countries under them and by the way don't forget the brexit exit anyway so we will not say that united kingdom is still a part of eu but there is a law that allows for these countries to have some flexibilities in their own local law which then deviates from maybe the standard recommendation or something so it then the recommendation then becomes mere recommendation and no longer what the law is right so in the same situation or better say in the same way you'll find that countries that are not part of eu they have their own laws for instance let me talk about united states and just in case you are joining this conversation and you're expanding your business uh to the united states or maybe you are already doing business in the united states and you find yourself getting data from uh prospect customers maybe you're monitoring their behavior you are pushing some adverse to sell to them then you can also reach out you know send a comment in the chat box i'll consider that and i'll see if it's something we can do next time so back to the matter now in the united states there's something that is called the opt-out method whereas in eu european union there is the opt-in method or opt-in approach the opt-out approach simply means that um, maybe you might find yourself uh, you're browsing through content and then you'll find the browser, maybe cookie policy, some other policy, their privacy, telling you that, look, if you do not want us to, uh, I mean, this, this, this website uh, uses data or this website processes data and if you do not want us to process your data, you need to opt out so you have to click and opt out if you do not click that means that you have given your consent by implication but in the european union it's a different ballgame under the gdpr you must give a full 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 consent and of course there's something else that many entrepreneurs are using these days which is called a legitimate interest approach to it meaning instead of having to seek for consent which is very dicey it could be very complicated why can i not leverage on the fact that let's say there is a contract i have a duty to get the name address uh, the phone number of my client in the eu somewhere within the eu so that i can send the product that my client ordered for now you can leverage that as a basis for legitimate interest and a whole lot of other things now just in case uh, you know I've, I've touched on something just now a very good strategy and we can still have that conversation where we look at the different things or the different strategies valid legal strategies you can use to get information from your customers in the eu without having to i wish i came with a red card i i, I would have loved to bring out a red card and say without having to receive the red card <laughs> like meta like facebook so hopefully we'll, have, we'll, we'll get into that conversation as well but the long and short is you know you have to be on the lookout for these laws you have to understand these laws and i wish that you know i came uh, i had wanted to give you an example of um uh, a data i mean sorry a, a privacy statement a policy because many entrepreneurs or better still many people do not understand that you can access websites and still insist that you are not giving your consent for them to extract your information so we find that many people, once they see all those privacy stuff, 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 they just think, oh, I cannot access this website and then they log out. And, you know, this, I've been a victim of this many years ago before I started applying myself to understand data privacy, especially in the context of GDPR. So GDPR uh, as a regulation has made life very, very easy and it's, it, it supports more the people than the companies that are using the uh, people's information to, to do business and a whole lot. So this is very interesting. And I'm having this conversation with you because I believe that you are a company that would likely be leveraging on people's information, whether to serve them better or whether to market to them, to build your business one way or the other. I think that data is the new oil of the global economy. And this is why this conversation is important. Well, I said a whole lot, and I think I would love to, you know, get into that point. Um, just give you snippets, bits, bits, bits. 
on the five things that matter very much. Now, I'm summing this conversation up by saying you need a quality privacy statement. You need to go back to check your privacy statement and ensure that it is robust enough and it complies with the standard, the GDPR standard, if you are going to be transacting or trading at the level of the EU. So having said this, what are five things that are essential for your privacy policy or your privacy statement as it were? Number one thing is you as an entity, you need to ensure that you are open and transparent enough. Now, being open and transparent means that in your privacy policy, you have to do a quality introduction of who you are, uh, what you do, uh, what you're going to be using the data for, why, why you're collecting the, 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 the data uh, from your customer. This is very essential. So I've seen many privacy statements, privacy policies, that you know does get into all the point model everything up it's an old school system of doing things and if care is not taken because the law supports more seems to support more the natural persons the people than the corporates than the companies it's important that you have a review of that privacy policy to be sure that you are getting it right so um you know, that's the, the, the number one thing. Then the number two thing you need to do is to ensure that you list the type of data that you collect. This is very crucial. And there's a law, I mean, sorry, there's a rule that says that don't get more than you need. The moment you begin to do, uh, for want of what data investing, where you're just extracting information for sake of it, and a lot of people do that. Years back, I find myself doing that because I have an understanding of, you know, targeted, I mean, getting people's data, using it to target them for, to, to, to market products to them. And sometimes you just get into the relevant things that you think, well, I might still need this thing later. For instance, you do not need somebody's phone number if that phone number is not necessary to the transaction that is being done. And you have to learn this. It's very crucial. So it's important that you know, uh, have a list of what is relevant for you to be able to, um, to, be able to, to do business with your client. Let them know how do you collect those information how long are you going to be keeping the information? In different parts of the globe, there are different standards. Um, Averagely, the, the, the general rule is, so long as you will be needing the information to service that client, you have a right to keep it, right? But there are, there are, there are uh, recommendations, best practices that, you know, maybe once in two years, once in three years, you need to get back to your clients again and ask them, I mean, notify them and let them give you consent, uh, let them give you approval, especially when consent is the basis of the you holding on to the data. But if it's some other reasons, which, you know, hopefully another time we'll get into, you can always hold on to the data, but there are best practices on holding on to people's personal data, which, you know, is, is, is very very crucial and the next thing is the right of your customer to be informed in your privacy policy you need to ensure that you are reiterating to your customers that look this information that um, we have you have a right to access to let us know that you want to even know what information about me do you have you have you have a right uh, to access it you have a right to correct it you would have a right to say, oh, please, discard my information. You have a right to delete, which is really the point I'm making. You can say, well, I do not want my information to be on your people's platform. And not many people know this. You can mail, you can message, you can let somebody or an entity that has reached out, I mean, collected your data to know that you want them to forget you. Right? I mean, forget. It's called the right to be forgotten. You can do that. So you as an entrepreneur, you need to know that you have a duty to even notify the, your data subjects that they can reach out to you, let you know that you know they don't want all of these things and then you close the chapter for them. So this is also, uh, it's also very crucial. 
And then what is the next step? Now, you need to also demonstrate that you have sufficient uh, apparatus, sufficient guards that protect the information from being leaked or being exposed. And just in case, even though I'm addressing you as an entrepreneur, and for many that are joining for the information purpose, have you noticed before, maybe you got an email saying that, oh, look, we suspect or there was an hack of our system, we have, we have we recovered, we are doing everything possible, blah, 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 blah. Have you ever wondered why did they reach out to you? It's because it is global best standard. If you ever suspect that there's a hacking of your system or that there was actually a hacking, right? You have a duty to notify the data subject very quickly. And so, in your privacy policy, these are things you have to demonstrate. What safeguards, what measures have you put in place to ensure that the information about people is properly safeguarded? Remember what I said, data is information. I mean, data is a new oil of the global economy. If people are hacking systems to have access to people's data because with data you can sell anything you can do you can do anything okay uh how many have i said now i think uh, i think i think i've said four so let me know your comments in the comment box let me know how i mean let me know what your thoughts are around this whole thing that um that 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 we have said so far let me know your comments and then i think where i'm going to be stopping today is the fact that you also have a duty to provide your customers with sufficient information on how they can reach out to you you cannot be too far from your customers you cannot uh you could not have put forward information without letting them know these are the measures i mean these are the avenues these are the means of getting to us maybe they're making a request for some data correction making a request for data deletion you have a duty to ensure that you give the information and interestingly even in your team there should be like a, a data protection officer there should be somebody there should be an email there should be a phone number there should be a contact that has been put there so that anybody that needs to reach out can reach out now i hope that this has really helped you today and um, just as i said the intention today is to help you to build a robust uh, excuse me a robust privacy policy and um, hopefully from today's conversation let me get your comments in the comment box uh, let me know what you want us to talk about but from today's conversation i think it's also important to address as many um, e-commerce experts out there as many e-commerce entrepreneurs that may want to get into stores uh, i hope that you know we get into it again where we'll delve deep into what you need to do and what you need to know and just in case you want us to talk about your uh what you need to do what you need to look out for if you want to build a client base in the united states hit the comment box let me know your thoughts from your feedback will not handle this going forward. Thank you for joining today's conversation. My name is Yitayo Okunyeni. See you next time.